Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at another laser engraver, this time from a company called Algo Laser, and this is their DIY kit Mark II. Now, this particular version has a 10 watt laser, and when it goes on sale, or should I say pre-sale, from September the 18th, through the 25th, the price is gonna be $299. And they'll also throw in some freebies for you. You'll be able to get an extra 5% off, and then they're also gonna give you 10 pieces of plywood for free, and that has a $39 value. Now, the thing about this particular laser is that they've developed something called the Algo OS 2.0, and it's designed to make laser engraving a lot easier, especially if you are just kind of getting your feet wet and want to know if this is something that you want to do or not. And that OS makes it possible for you to do laser engravings without the need of any computer, which means that if you don't want to run a program like Lightburn, you don't have to in order to do your engravings. So I'm going to take a look at all of that and show you how this thing works and how I've been getting along with it. Now, as far as some specs goes, the maximum engraving area right out of the box is going to be 400 by 435 millimeters. However, it is extendable because they have a number of different add-ons that you can choose as well. And you can extend it so that you can get 400 by 880 millimeters of workable space. And the maximum engraving speed is listed as being 12,000 millimeters per minute. And even though this is a 10 watt laser, it is also capable of cutting through certain woods of a certain thickness and I will get into that as well a little bit later on. So I only have a little bit of experience when it comes to laser engravers, but I'm gonna share with you what my experience was like working with this. And it starts with the assembly because this is the DIY kit. Now it comes in a box that's a little bit smaller than I was expecting, but that's because everything was packed very efficiently. It comes with a variety of different parts as well as some hardware, screws, Allen keys, and a little screwdriver for you to put everything together as well as an instruction guide that it's a pretty decently thick book and it tells you everything that you need to do. So really, it's not difficult to put together. The main thing is I had to take these red pieces on the side here that act as the feet and those had to be screwed into the frame. And then once that was done, I had to take the belts that come packaged separately, run these belts through these channels over on the side and make sure that those were screwed down nice and tight as well. Had to take this middle part here and just slide it onto these individual rails. And then as for the laser itself, it's held in place by thumb screws that you can just loosen to lift it up and lift it down and tighten them back down so that you can lock it into place. And then the screen is also something that it is fully assembled as far as the mechanics that go on the inside, but it did have to be mounted to the front here just using a couple of screws. So at the end of the day, it's not difficult to put together, but if it's your first time doing something like this, you just take a little bit of time to make sure that you're getting everything properly installed. When you look on the front of the screen, there's a couple things that you can see here. First, you got the power button, followed by a set of safety keys here that you can use to lock and unlock the machine, just to be sure that you can keep up with these. I will just keep this in just so you won't lose it but you'll be able to lock it with one direction, unlock it with the other, and then you have the emergency stop button. So if you see that something is going a little bit awry with your laser cutting or engraving, you can push this down and it's going to stop everything. And when you want to disengage this, this isn't a button that you can just press and then it just stops and then you press it again and then it uh, goes away. You actually have to twist this. And when you twist it, the button goes back up again. If this is left down, then every time you turn on the laser engraver, it's gonna give you an exclamation point message and it's just gonna just beep at you constantly. So make sure that you give this a twist if it's been engaged so that everything will be nice and free again. 
So this is the Algo OS. And as I said earlier, this is designed to help you to laser engrave easier without the need of a computer. And it's also something that you can connect to Wi-Fi. So you can get over the air firmware updates, and then you can also download the mobile app for iOS or Android, and you'll be able to do some laser engraving from there. And you'll be able to monitor the progress of the laser engraver from there as well. So let's just run through this real quick. Let's start with projects here. Now this received a firmware update today and previously there were only nine examples shown here, but now there are 56. But when I do go to them, you'll see that these files here, it says that the material file does not exist and please download the file from algolaser.com. That is there for most of those, but the ones that were on here previously were these files here for the pen holder, unicorn pen case. We got a lantern here, a gentleman's pen holder. There's a gun, a handbag pen pendant, a sleigh here, kind of like for Christmas time. And then the rest of these pages is just telling me that the file does not exist. So I'll have to jump over to algolaser.com to take a look at what's new there. But that's something that just popped up with the firmware update. Now, next over here is the SD card that is already on the inside. And if I go down to the second page, I can go to engraving material, and then I can just see these various preloaded pictures that Algo Laser put on here for you to engrave. So you can see here's one right there, and we can just kind of go through a few of them. So these are just some examples of things that you can just do a sample engraving on right out the gate that they already include for you. So now let's do a test engrave and I'm going to engrave this photo right here that was already loaded up on the machine and I'm gonna click engrave. And at this point, this is where the ease of use comes in without a computer. So I can click on materials up here and they have preloaded a bunch of different profiles based on the material that you have. So we've got a few different types of plywood. We have pine board, we have uh, MDF, we've got cherry wood, walnut wood, different types of acrylics, cardboards, paper, canvas, denim, ABS sheet, uh, epoxy panel, bamboo. I mean, just look at all this, dry leaves. We have all of this to choose from. Now I have just a little coaster here and I'm just gonna say that this is birch plywood. And when I select the material that I want, it moves over to this screen here and I can select basically how dark do I want the engraving to be. So this looks very similar to the type of chart that you would get in Lightburn when you do an engraving test. So you select which one that you want and it tells you what it's doing on the right side. So if I select this one, the speed is gonna be at 10,000 millimeters per minute at 80% power. If I want it to be the darkest that it can get, it's going to be 5,000 millimeters per minute at 100% power. And then it just changes based on your speed and the power that you are going to be using. I say that I want to use, uh, let's say this right here, 10,000 millimeters per minute at 100% power. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit confirm. I can change the size of the photo over here if I want. It's currently 52 by 50 millimeters. We'll see how that uh, gets around. And then you can go to passes, how many times you want the laser to pass through. I'm gonna leave it at one. But then at this point, you can also change the quality from high, medium to highest. Let's just keep it here at high just to see what happens. And then we can go to processing. So on this screen, you can see that the photo that I'm going to engrave is in the lower left hand corner of the screen and that's the default origin. But my material is more towards the middle. So what I can do is just touch on this photo and I can drag this to be more towards the middle. 
And that's where the laser is going to go. So I can just constantly kind of just fiddle with this in order to get it to be approximately where my material is. And from there, I can fine tune things. So in order to see what the outline of the picture is going to be, I can just click this button right here for framing. And it's gonna put out that really low power uh, laser so that I can see what my framing is going to be. And basically, I just need to frame this up so I can get it as close to the middle as possible. So I'm gonna do that right now. And if you don't want to just use that picture method, you can always go back to the original origin and range screen, and then you'll be able to fine tune where you want the origin point to be. So if I wanted it to start there, I can see where things are gonna go. And then I can also just kind of move it over. I can move it down and I can even make the photo bigger in order to match the dimensions of my material. And once you have the positioning pretty much to where you want it, now we have to level the laser. And to do that, they gave us this little tool here. And what you can do is just set it down on the material. Then you can loosen these thumb screws. And then we have to just make sure that the, uh, that the shield is resting on the lip of this tool. And then it can just tighten back down the thumb screws. Then at this point, we can just hit start. So I'm going to reconnect the air assist tube and then get started. And this is the final result. And I say that this looks pretty decent considering I just used the on-screen controls. Now you can still connect this to a computer and use light burn if you really want to dial in your values, but just for something straight off of the laser engraver itself, I say that this, it's not bad. Now let's take a look at a laser cut piece. And this is also a file that came preloaded on the laser engraver. And this is of a pen holder. And I just let it do what it was going to do. I didn't mess with any settings whatsoever. And I also had the air assist on for this. But doing this does produce a fair amount of smoke. So if you can, it's always a good idea to get yourself an enclosure as well as some kind of ventilation so that you don't smoke yourself out. This next clip is an example of what happens if you do try to use a program like Lightburn. So I had it etch this Salamander's logo into this coaster, but I also instructed it to do a cut afterwards, a circular cut. And that's another one of the things you can do with this laser engraver if you want a little more versatility out of it. I think the settings I use for this as far as engraving goes was somewhere between eight and 9,000 millimeters per minute at 100% power, but I found a decent setting for cutting to be about 200 millimeters per minute at 100% power or this plywood that's about two and a half millimeters thick. So what about thicker plywoods? Well, this one is about six millimeters thick, and this is also a file that came on the laser engraver. And it said that you should be using three millimeter thick plywood. Well, I doubled that. And as expected, I wasn't able to cut through it, but the etching itself came out looking pretty darn clean. So if this were the appropriately sized wood, as far as thickness goes, this could have been a pretty nice looking model. So for this next clip, I decided to use the Algo Laser app and I imported an image of the figure feedback logo and decided to make a puzzle out of it. I chose four puzzle pieces and then the laser just etched in my logo and then it cut out four pieces so that I can put this together as a puzzle. And the lines also came out looking pretty darn good. And these were done on a piece of plywood, again, about two and a half millimeters thick. The engraving itself could have been done better as far as me using different settings to make it come out better. But as far as the cutting goes, it came out pretty good. So now I want to show you a few more things that I engraved on here. And the first one is this eagle. And I think this eagle turned out pretty decently. I uh, first tried to do this on like a lighter setting. This was all just using the built-in functions on the uh, DIY kit Mark II. But this one I think turned out a lot better looking, darker lines. I think this one turned out much better. A fun thing that I did was this file that I found on Thingiverse. I'll leave a link in the description. This is a 
floppy disk and it did a little bit of engraving and it did some cutting as well just a couple of cuts one right there and a little bit right there came out nice and cleanly so that looks pretty cool so here are a couple of the coasters that I cut through with the laser just to show a difference between when I had that uh, air assist from the external pump. This one did not have that assist so you can see the charred edges but this one I did have that assist and it looks very nice and clean around here. And here's a look at a couple of the emblems that I cut out and you can clearly see which one had that additional air assist and which one didn't have that additional air assist. This is the engraving test that I was able to do. So even though you can do engravings without needing a computer, when you want to be more finely tuned, you can do something like this. And right off the back, it tells me that with this type of material, if I try to use 1,000 or 1,000 millimeters per minute speed, it is going to start cutting through almost all of the, uh, of the power cycles from around about 50% power on all the way to 100. So I would definitely want to stay within this parameter so that I can get some decent looking engravings. Moving on to a different type of material. This is a leatherette patch and this is that salamanders logo again. Again, that turned out pretty good, I think. And then I tried to do it with a gorilla picture that I found online. And as you can see, this one came out way too dark. There's like no definition in that gorilla. So I tried it again and I changed the settings this time around. And as you can see now, the detail came out a lot better. I do think that I could have went lighter still and this was just using the built-in uh, selections from the Algo OS 2.0. So this one looks a lot better than the last one, but still some adjustments are required to get it exactly how I want it. Finally, this was one of the first engravings that I did of this uh, Native American skull right here with the headpiece. I think this one turned out looking pretty darn good as well. This one is actually very nice and sharp. I really do like this one. So there you have it. Those are my impressions of the Algo Laser DIY Kit Mark II. I think it's fantastic how they implemented that operating system into this laser engraver to give you an alternative to using a computer, having that connected to the laser engraver and using that for everything that you want to do. I think that is great that they've managed to just incorporate that directly onto the screen to make things easier for you. And I'm really interested in seeing how that evolves over time through firmware updates. But at the same time, this is a laser engraver that's still capable of being fine-tuned through that third-party software such as Lightburn. And with this being a DIY kit, I think that is easy enough to get set up and get going as a first laser engraver, but at the same time, it can still teach you about some of the basics of how this whole thing works, and it opens up the door for more tweaking and more knowledge so that you can take that with you as you just sort of go along and learn more about this stuff. That's the impression that I'm getting also as someone who's pretty new to this as well. So I do want to thank Algo Laser for sending this over to me so I can check it out for you guys here. And if you're interested in this or any of the accessories that they have for this laser, because they have quite a few, be sure to check the links down in the description. It's going to take you exactly to where you need to go. So that's all for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.